Right, there's a couple of things that could be improved on the rear lighting on the Land Rover Defender. Now, one of them is, I'm gonna sneeze, right, let me try and hold it in. Right, one of them is the indicators. So when you are broken down and you've got your hazard lights on, your little indicators will flash here. But on this side, when you open the spare wheel, we unlocked, your view of your indicators is obscured. Now, we've got a slight workaround for this. The other problem on the Land Road Defender, if at night you reverse, your reverse light is in here. Your reverse camera is down here, and the amount of light you get is not enough to power up the screen, and we've, we've done a video on the problem with that. Now, our solution was to add extra light in, like this, and we had a neat little solution where that could sit in there and it fit and it brilliantly gave you a nice reverse light so that the camera system would work at night reversing which is kind of handy really um so we've been selling these and initially we laser cut a couple of bits to make a little plinth but we are trying to get better aren't we tyler Wait. and we're always trying to get a better design so we have done two improvements one is we have an injection molded piece here that is specially designed and we are gonna get these available and this houses the light like so it goes in here right and then you it's got a little tricky bit here Tyler haven't seen this yet it roots the wire through and out the end there so that you can get the wire out um it's got a left and a right mounted on it here that's got an R. can you see that Tyler if I catch the light yeah. right, yeah. And the other one obviously got. So we know this goes, and this nestles in and is shaped much neater to fit in like so. So normally these are body color. I've painted mine black, um, and it goes in there. And the other thing is it will cover up that silver strip if you like covering up silver. So it's going to sit in there. It's going to fit in with double-sided tape, and there's also a little couple of screws that will screw it in. So we'll show you this video. We're going to show you how to do this right. Now, that's all great, but you don't want to go tapping into your wiring loom. So we have got this no-cut wiring loom, and it interposes. It goes in between the body and the rear light, passes all the signals straight through, but gives you these five wires. And I'll put the wiring diagram on the screen now to tell you what each of these wires do. And basically, it taps into your indicator your tail light, your brake light, your reverse light. So if you want to put auxiliary lighting. Now, obviously I will put a little disclaimer. I haven't tested every single brand of light. Some lights may well trip out the thing, but we do know the reverse light, we've been using this for a year now, Tyler, and we've had no problems with ours. Um, we're going to add the reverse light, the indicator light today, and we will test this before we publish this video. So the indicator, right. So the old light just had literally um, two wires and that was and that gave you five LEDs. Now it's not going to look super bright, but believe me, it is right. There you go. Um, now what we've done now is we've modified it so that the black and red as before. Am I sort of let me 300. 300. Here we go. We've got this. Tyler. We've got this the black and red as before, but we've only got we've got. How many LEDs we got there? We got four LEDs. Did that other one have six? Can I not count, Tyler? It did indeed have six. So we've gone from four to six because it was it's still bright enough, but we've also added the indicator takeoff. So when you tap into the indicator wire, every time it goes live, you will get an additional indicator, which is a safety feature for if you break down and you've got your hazard lights on, etc. Right. So we are gonna do this, Tyler, right. So to start with, we have got to rip this off. So this rear housing is just held on with clips, which makes it sound lush. But the clips, they're little monkeys, aren't they, Tyler? They sort of dive off, as we'll see. Now this has been off and on and painted. Don't pay too much attention to this panel. Yours may not have the checker plate because this is a sort of accessory. Right, and the best way of getting this off, Tyler, I, I forget. It, I think we might be to get in the top here. Yeah, here you go. Yourself. And that's, all right. all right, there you go, we're in, we're in. And yours won't be as easy as this, believe me, because mine's been off. So you can get in here. This strip would be a good thing to lever against because they, they pop off, and this panel also pops off. They're not that dear, these panels, Tyler. They're only about 50, 60 pounds, though. Right, and 
and then you've got to just pull it. Whoa. There you go. All right. What have we got going on? Now, it's held on by a series of these clips. Some of ours, as I say, it's been all, you can see some of them do break sometimes. Um, but you can super glue these clips. Now, a lot of these clips break off and you get this little tinkle, tinkle, tinkle sound as they sort of dive down there somewhere. So we will include some of these clips with this kit. Um, remember to remind me to do that because you're, you're going to lose a couple of those. Um, when you're putting these back on, make sure this prong here, see that long prong, lines up with the corresponding part. That's, that's the only way you'll go wrong, which is that hole there. Sometimes it takes a dive this side and then it doesn't go back together. Right. right. Now with this exposed, there is a connector here. Now the rear light connector fits in to these two little holes here. So you have to push it out and then you should be able to, we have a screw, where's that little tool I threw on the floor? You should then push that out and you should be able to remove or wiggle your way out and get the connector out of here. The rear light connector. Now I've already put the interposer loom on. I mean, you did this last time as I recall, Tyler. Your fingers must be exceptionally long. Now, if you do have a lot of difficulty doing that, this panel here does actually pull off. All right, so I can show you this, which will give you more room. Right. Again, yours will not be as easy as this. You will be pulling at, pulling. Which I think I did replace this one. Oh, right, and that's, okay. these two are alignment, and there must be something that grips into those two little squares. So if you want a bit more room, you can pop that off, and if you want to colour code that at the same time, that's another option. So it is no more complicated than that. Point to note, this top bit is available separately. This is two parts, and from Land Rover, they're just stuck together with double-sided tape. There's no fixings on this, this bit here. It literally is just double-sided taped. I won't pull it off because it'll ruin it. Right then. And then you should be able to fish out the connector that's behind here. And you can add in your interposing loom um, like so. So you unplug the one, there's a little button you have to press to release your... There you go, to release that. Then you plug in the new loom like we've already done. And actually, let me just show you. So these two little pin, there's a location pin and a furry pin, they locate the connector in here so that the connector doesn't rattle around. And we've got enough room to tuck that one back down in there, okay, and get that one. We can get that one installed back in, in there. We'll do all that later. Right, so the trick is now, right, now, on the loom. Now, be careful, you're probably better off, don't go trying your lights or unlocking your car or anything with these because you will blow a fuse. These will, they shouldn't be live now, but well, they will be live at some point. Now, what you have to do is you have to make your own connection from these to the new lights, but you need to get all this together in the right order, um, otherwise you'll be pooped. Right, let me just get everything together and I'll show you. Right, now, because we've removed this bit, which I think is probably, we've just been discussing this in our little break, haven't we, Tyler? And we think it's probably better to remove this whole part. It is a wrestle to get it out, but as you can see, it does come out. It's it just, just got to be brave. And it will make the next bit easier. But if you don't want to take it out, it's still possible to do it on the vehicle. Now, you've got to make sure you get the right one of these. So we are working on the left side of the car, aren't we, Tyler? So we need the one with an L. And we can see where this locates. Now, what we can do, obviously, before you go removing the double-sided tape, we can get that on neat there right but we've got to make sure we get the wires from the light through here and they've got a little groove they run in so in fact we could screw that in now can't we Tyler yeah because yeah, that's that's all in and done now there is a little gasket here which is probably worth using seeing as they supply it I'll put that there now it doesn't really matter which way up you've got we have got our little logo on it there. Um, so it depends whether you want to hide our logo or display our logo. Yeah. Love us. It does. Get some stickers. We've got, we've got to launch those stickers, haven't we? Got loads of stickers going. 
All right then. We do have a lot of stuff to launch. We keep get. Is this the right screw for this? I don't know. Yeah. It is. That is. Now I wonder. We'll have to. I think they came. Those screws come with the light unit itself. Yeah. So, so yeah, you'll need a Torx T10 for that. I need to get another mic, Tyler, so they can hear you. Just shout every time. Shout, yeah. Pretend you're deaf. Talk to you, Ted. <laughs> right. There we go. So that then, that goes in there. Get into the groove. Will had heard that song. You heard that song? No. Madonna. I probably heard it, but... Yeah, I'm not going to try and sing it, Tyler. My, I am multi-skilled, Tyler, but, <laughs> but singing is not one of my talents. Not openly. Not openly. No, not even karaoke. Right, then. Right, okay, so let's get that. Oh, look at that. Psh, psh, psh. Ah, now, that's all good. We've got double-sided tape. Now, we are also going to supply a couple of other screws, so we've done this in the wrong order, haven't we, Tyler? Have we? Yeah, because we can't now screw those other bits in. That's fine. That's all right, we'll, we'll just undo it. Don't do it like that. <laughs> but it actually, it might help you, because at least we know those wires are in the right place now. Yeah, I mean, you might want to do the non-screw, don't screw, don't put any holes in your car, which is fine, you can do that. But we do have the provision there for a couple of extra screws, which we will provide. But actually, I, yeah, I'm not going to do it, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go. I'm, I trust in the tape, Tyler. Land Rover have trusted the tape to hold that bit on. So I'm going to go for it right. Here we go. Plus, it's in a, it's in a fairly well-protected area. It is, yeah, there's no force or anything on that. So, right, we're all good, right. We are gonna, right, so then you have to come down here and you have to make your connections. So the connections you need are shown here. The black goes to the black, the green goes to the red, and the orange goes to the yellow. What we are gonna do is we are gonna put some heat shrink over, we are gonna solder all these tips. I've had this on the car a while, and you can see what's happened if you don't solder them, Tyler, can you see that? That one's gone a little bit black. There's yeah. some oxidizations occurred. So I'm going to recommend soldering for reliability. Um, so right, let's get on. We will get that soldered. We're not going to do a soldering lesson today. We'll put some heat shrink over it first, solder those up, and we'll come back and look how that's looking. Right, Tyler's done a neat job of soldering this. Um, where this hasn't got any protection on it, it might be worth adding some heat shrink sleeving all the way back on these, just so you've got some more protection. I'm just going to take this up now. The heat shrink. The heat shrink, yeah. There we go, and we can put that back in there then. Right, and then I will finish taping this bit up. Um, there's Tyler's joints, they're all quite tidy. And then what you can do is you can just tuck this, there's loads of room in underneath there. You can tuck that all in. And you've got the connector back in there, Tyler, yeah? Yeah. So we'll get that all taped up. We'll, I'll finish this, and then we'll come back and give a demo. Right, before you go and put it back in, just check, you may, you may be lucky, you may have the missing clip stuck in here. Oh. Oh, oh jackpot! Oh. That doesn't there. happen every day, does it? It only falls in the car. Yeah, wait, there you go. So, or down a yeah, drain. Just make sure you've got none of those, because there you go, that might save you some clips. I'm debating whether it's worth super gluing those clips on, but probably leave it better to leave it as factory. All right, let's get that bit on, shall we, Tyler? No. Right, well, this is the bit I always seem to find is a pain. And you need to get it round the back of that light as well. Was this one in? Yeah. As soon as that one's in, the rest will up. That's why I have to push it in manually. There we go. So that's the final look. So you take a look at that partner and I'll, I'll do the.
Everything work okay? Yeah, all good. Brilliant. Um, so there we go. Upgrade done. Safety, rear visibility. It's all good. Any comments, let us know. We'll get those on the website as soon as we can.